We have an amazing situation here where there's a crested Franklin walking just past that young sub-adult in Gahuma. Yes, be careful. I don't know if it's seen it just yet, but you can hear it acting very suspiciously, or very nervously, sorry. But not interested at all. I think I heard a kudu barking quite far away behind me, and that's what got that youngster's attention. But it just shows you, once a crested Franklin would have made a great toy for a young lion. There's definitely some antelope barking behind us. And now, not even interested one little bit. How crazy is that? But off it goes to join the rest of the pride, which are just sitting up in front. You are very lucky, Franklin. You would account your feathers that you made it through that because it wouldn't have taken much for this youngster to have caught it. And they're a lot more nimble now, I suppose, than what they used to be when they had to fall over their own feet. But this is really, really quite beautiful. Off they go. I'm trying to figure out, we're sitting here now, and Sebastian and I are trying to work out what is going to be our best way in. I think, Seb, what happens if we go here, where that Franklin has just gone past, and sort of navigate, maybe go around that big wattle, and come from the other side because the other cars are just sort of over here and I don't want to get in their way too much so we'll go the other way around let's try this again We've got lots of nice leaves to clean later all the old ones no one was going to eat them anyway yes I think we've got a spot here We'll squeeze through this little gap and then Seb, if I poke my nose through here, we're going to get all of them. This will be quite nice. You'll just see all their little heads. How's that? Fine? There we go. Now we can count them two. One, two, three, four, five. So five adults are here. One, two, three, four, five, six little cubs. So there we go. I can confirm that the entire Nkuhuma Pride are here and they look wonderful. Isn't that a great shot? You can see that follow me sign so clearly now on the lions in the back of their ears, those black marks. So just as a waterbuck has a white ring around its bottom, this is how the lions follow each other around. A slightly more subtle sign and then they also have got the black tip uh, or black hair on the tip of their tail, which they will use. And we've got a whole, look at the, can I draw your attention away? Look at this family of Franklins that are now coming down here just to the left. There's about seven of them acting very nervously. Look at this. They're all saying, everybody quickly move, move fast. Nobody get left behind. Now they know the lions are here and they do have to be careful. Even though it would be a very small meal, one mouthful in fact. They could be eaten by these cats. Very noisy. So now this is probably a serious frustration for these lions. Because as they sit here waiting to hear a kudu pull a leaf off of a tree, or perhaps as a buffalo walks through the grass, you know, the crunching of the leaves underneath its feet, these birds are now giving away the presence of these lions by alarming like this. And all the animals speak the same language. Yes, don't go straight. I think you need to carry on going right. Oh, silly bird. Natural selection is going to get you. <laughs> Look at that one's going, I'm just going to go down this way. This seems safe. Don't go there. It will be the last road that you walk on. Yes. You're obviously not the leader of the, of the flock. Come back. No, it wants to. <laughs> Silly birds. Now normally what leopards do, and I quite like it, is they often show their frustration to the animals that give their presence away. So if this was a leopard uh, and the Franklins are doing the same thing, that you'd be snarling and almost spitting in disgust at the Franklins' behavior. But of course they're not doing anything that they're not supposed to. They're petrified. Their feathers are all ruffled. But I think that's beautiful. And again, we, Ali's been speaking about camouflage for most of the drive. And talking about leopards rosettes and how that helps them blend into the vegetation very well lions don't need rosettes because the tawny color uh, that their coats are 
blends in, they almost become completely invisible in the grass. And this could be a nice thing to do, maybe take a screenshot and to all your family members at home, say count the lions and see if anybody can of course guess correctly. Lots of flies, lots of ticks, but they're still looking quite healthy. And the flies don't seem to be bothering them as much as they've been bothering Tumba today. I suppose as you get older and the longer you live in the bush, the more tolerant you become. Or you just pick up a quarry branch, <laughs> like what we do as presenters, and swat away. I must admit, I have murdered many, many biting flies um, in my career, and I don't feel sad about it at all. They bite me, they make me bleed. I feel no remorse for the flies. Oh, my comms are gone again. Now, S Sunny Jane, mm. I think you've said Sunny, Sunny Jane. Jane. You're wondering how many, is there only one pride of mm. lions on the reserve? I think the question was, sorry, Alice, my comms have decided to disappear again, perhaps as we were bouncing about in the car. Um, so, uh, uh, no, there's not just one pride. This is our sort of, uh, you know, if, I, if you will, our resident pride that we do see most often but there are many other prides and lions within the area that pop on every now and then so we've got the Talalas and the Torchwood Pride and we've got the sticks that we see every now and then so there's, there's quite a few uh, that move around in here and then the Birmingham Boys which are four male lions and they sort of rule the northern Sabi sands up in this area they, they see all those prides that I've just mentioned to you uh, they are responsible for most of the cubs now too, with the sticks, with the torchwood, and as well as the nkuhumas, the tsalalas. Although, yes, I did see it quite a while ago. It was actually, I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, that I saw the, the tsalala female, uh, the tailless female. She had cubs, I think it was two, which was quite nice to see. We haven't seen them in person, but I did see some pictures. And we actually haven't seen them for quite some time. But now they're just resting up. Just taking a little break and, and like I was saying earlier this is actually quite a good strategy to just sit here like this waiting listening waiting for one animal to make a mistake to make a noise and then they'll be up and heading in that direction I don't think that they're going to stay down for too long I think they'll be up shortly moving around it's nice and cool but while the Nguhumas take a quick siesta let's go across to Ali who seems to have one of the rarest birds up in a tree.